Okay, let's go back to the notes. That is a perfect, perfect illustration. The flood is as a result of lack of law and order. Ah, deep, deep, deep. Destruction is inevitable when there is no law and order. That's what he said. Hmm. Okay. Societies and nations are only successful by how much they enforce law and order. Okay, let's go back to that other film that were the video that was there previous. No, no, near Israel. There are five countries, yes, with the best police. Why do we have why do we need best police services? Because it's enforcement. And everything depends on enforcement, development, security, everything depends on it. Let's go. Do you have sound? Can you put it? Trusted with the responsibility of protecting the law and the citizens against internal aggression. Each country has its own police unit that is governed by law and follows their own style of enforcing the law. Combating crime and ensuring that the rules and regulations are upheld is each police is officer's primary responsibility. We have highlighted a list of the best police officers in the world based on their performance and style of enforcing the law. So here are the five countries with the best police forces in the world. Let's begin. Number five, France. The National Police of France ranks among the most highly trained and professional police forces. It is because of the efforts of these valiant officers that when France was attacked recently by terrorists, many lives were saved. The average police officer in France has not received enough training to do sophisticated activities such as disarming a bomb or doing something that could mean the difference between life and death. This is why the force is categorized into various squads that are trained differently to tackle different scenarios as and when need arises. With this level of organization, it is obvious that they would rank among the best in the world. Number 4. United Kingdom Famously known as the National Police Force of the United Kingdom, this is one of the best police services in the world owing to their level of discipline and sensitivity. Recently, they launched a campaign to raise awareness of their police number to the public, something that most police services take for granted. They offer their services in such a way that it is customized to suit the public's desire. This means that they do their job according to how the public wants them to do. Professionalism and public protection is what drives this police force. Number three, Italy. Italy is known for all its beauty and rich ancient history. It is one of the most popular tourist attractions. Its rich history is dotted by episodes of the existence of the mafia during the 18th and 19th century. These were ruthless organized crime gangs that were said to offer protection to peasant families and do all the dirty jobs that cops could not do. The Italian police force ranks among the best because of the professionalism with which they conduct themselves, especially in the face of the challenges that the Mafia posed. The Anti-Mafia Police Division was responsible for bringing to justice two of the most powerful Mafia bosses in the history of Italy. This is probably why they still rank as one of the best. Number 2. United States of America The United States of America is the largest economy in the world and is also the world's superpower. It is only logical that their police force is among the best in the world. They have the best and most advanced military in the world, and this can be said of their police force as well. The police force in the U.S. is divided into various police departments and have the most advanced backup systems and sophisticated weaponry and tactics to conduct all manner of eventualities, including terror. Apart from the recent happenings that have seen the force accused of being brutal in their use of force, they still rank among the best in the world. Number 1. Japan Japan is one of the most developed countries in the world. Until a few years ago, it was the world's second largest economy after the United States, and therefore it is no wonder that its police force is among the best trained in the world. The police officers in Japan are trained the same way the US military is trained, which already shows just how good they are at what they do. They have the most sophisticated equipment and are also trained on the best discipline principles of policing. 
This is to ensure that they are always a step ahead of the criminals. They practically understand how to deal with any eventuality of crime prevention. And there you have, five countries with the best police forces in the world. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, this is only talking about the best police forces in terms of their uh, equipment, in terms of the delivery of their service, in terms of, uh, you know, the fact that it's not the safest, that's what I'm saying. Not the safest countries, not the most peaceful countries, but it's just police force, how they are being trained, how they are equipped, and things like that. But it still not, doesn't give the best result. You, we just saw another list of the most secure countries, the most free, peaceful countries. All these countries that are here, none of them goes into the most secure or the most peaceful. Because force is good, but the force of individual mental, like in Germany, is much better than this. Individual awareness to enforce law and order in people's consciousness rather than the force from outside. You know, there are two ways to enforce law and order. From inside and from outside. From inside, from awareness, from education, from enlightenment, and then from outside. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Yes. And also in terms of a financial cost to the nation as well. Uh, 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 that suggests that actually those five countries are investing more in security, which they could invest on other areas as well. Uh, and that is uh, to bring it back home now. In Nigeria, we need such things. We are not investing. Even though uh, um, uh, the population is, the, the crime is increasing, but that's, that is lacking in our so society as well. So uh, that's actually, that's how I could analyze that uh, area. The money that the, those Western nations supposed to be spending as a result of being liberal, a lot of uh, multicultural society is in that, in, in that country. So that's why they really need to invest. Nigeria, back home, we are not actually doing the same. Putting money in security. Eh? Putting money, in, pumping money in security. So. In enforcement, law enforcement. OK. Can put that up now. Okay. Societies and nations are only successful by how much they enforce law and order. If you find a peaceful nation, it is only because they enforce law and order. Beautiful. The purpose of security is order. We have security and law enforcement agencies. Stop again. The purpose of security is order. order. Mm. Even all those police and all those army and all those people that are, it's only, well, everybody is after one thing order. Okay? We have security. The purpose. Okay, sorry. The purpose of security is order. We have security and law enforcement agencies only because we need order. Beautiful. Profound. Profound. Order will then bring us peace, rest, Beautiful. harmony, Beautiful. and safety. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful logic. Read that again. Order. No, let's start okay. with it here. The purpose of security is order. We have security and law enforcement agencies only because we need order. Order will then bring us peace, rest, harmony, and safety. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. You see, everything, there is formula for everything you could say. Life is predictable if you only know the formula. Okay. Why do we have prisons for those who break order or create? Why do we have prisons? It's for those who break or law and order. Uh -huh. Yeah. Why those, do we? Those who create this order. Uh -huh. 
for those who create this uh, prison is existing only to maintain order for the society and for the criminals beautiful before prison though we must have enforcement agencies as police court systems customs etc all these structures are for maintaining law and order which leads to peace harmony and rest who could tell who could have known huh? that simply law and order is that the whole society depends on it however for us to have law enforcement agencies there must be legislative body <laughs> that determines where in the society there is no order. Hmm. Okay. If any refuse to obey the common laws and orders of the ship concerning their common peace or preservation, if any still shall mutiny and rise up against their commanders and officers, if any should preach or write that there ought to be no commanders or officers, because all are equal in Christ, therefore no masters nor officers, no law nor orders, no corrections nor punishments. I say, I never denied, but in such cases, whatever is pretended, the commander or commanders may judge, resist, compel, and punish such transgressors according to their deserts and merits. Now, this, the question here is that this one of the European leaders uh, in the, you know, in the old, in the past centuries, when people were saying they were, we are Christian nations, what should be the attitude of Christian nations to law and order, military, service? But we are Christians now. But we are all equal in Christ, and God has set us free. So he's responding to that. And say that you cannot say because you are now in Christ and you are equal and then order and law doesn't matter. You read that thing again, please. If any refuse to obey the common laws and orders of the ship concerning their common peace or preservation. You say the peace and preservation is for everybody. It's for that person too who is refusing to obey. It is for him for his peace and for his security that the law is there. So if he is refusing to obey and other people are refusing to obey, then he is not safe. Yeah. If any shall mutiny and rise up against their commanders and officers, if any should preach or write that there ought to be no commanders or officers because all are, in, are equal in Christ, you see? Yes. So the, the civiliz European civilization have solved this problem. They have encountered it and they have discovered that, you know what, the fact that we are equal in Christ or we are the same in Christ, it doesn't work when it comes to regulating the running society. <laughs> you still need law. You still need anarchy. Okay. All right. So if any should preach or write that there ought to be no commanders or officers, because all are equal in Christ, therefore no masters, no officers, no laws, no orders, no corrections, no punishments. I say, I never denied, but in such cases, whatever is pretended, the commander or commanders may judge, resist, compel, and punish such transgressors according to their deserts and merits. Yes, we are equal in Christ, but you violate the law. <laughs> you will bear the consequences. <laughs> All right, the legislative organ is therefore to enact laws for all areas of the society where there is no order. I want us to show. Okay, no, no, okay, before we show, let's keep on going. Then we have the executive body, which is to see into the day-to-day -day running 
of or maintenance of the society. Isaiah 33, 22. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. And he will save us. You see, God put legislative, executive, and judiciary in place. This is where it's coming from, the three arms of government. Isaiah 3.22, this verse and many other is what is responsible for the principles of democracy. The judge stands for judiciary arm of government. Lawgiver stands for the legislative arm of government. King stands for the executive arm of government. All are equal because Isaiah 3.22 says the same Lord presents everywhere the same lord present everywhere. sorry presence everywhere mm -hmm. which means equality of all arms of government before each other beautiful eh? you see that the civilization we have today is all from the bible since the three arms of government symbolizes the rulership of god it means for law and order to work no one must be above the law. Beautiful stuff. And where there is no law and order, where is a chaotic government, where there is no development, normally everybody who is powerful is above the law. <laughs> uh -huh. Everyone must be equal before the law. That is the formula. This is. Oh, sorry. This is the formula of maintenance of peace and rest in any society. Yeah. Peace is costly, but it is the but it is worth the expense. <laughs> okay. That's it. All right. Do we want to see some videos? I think. That might even be, you want to see videos? Okay. What is the best video to see now? There are so many videos that I, I had prepared for you. Can you push check? There are different ones. Uh, Croatia? Okay. Let's put Croatia. Croatia is a country that you might not even know where it is. Many people don't know where it is. Small country. Compared to Nigeria, it's a poor country. But because of order, you'll be amazed how organized they are. You see? Just by order, maintaining order, everybody wants to go there to rest. Money is moving there. And, uh, you know, Security, peace, one of the most peaceful places. One of the most peaceful societies. Not that they have more money than Nigeria, they have less money than Nigeria. But order is, you see, can you imagine the way they have kept their water clean? Can you imagine that this babish in Lagos, they, they have, have messed the whole thing up. Can you see the peace, the rest, the serenity? That's just as a result of all that. <laughs> this kind of nature, they are there in Africa too, even better. But every, you see the cities, everything depends on order. It doesn't matter how much God has blessed you. If you don't, cannot maintain order, you cannot enforce order, which comes through law, You don't have anything. Everything will be ruined. Order. Peace. Order. It's like a he it's like heaven. All this country. It's human being that maintain them. It's human being that did them. It's not God. God is not a whatever I say. What is it? It's not a but you know, prefer or what they call it, of eyes or respecter. It's not a respecter of what? Of persons. So God is not a respecter. 
of countries too. It's people themselves who are responsible. It's not miracle who did this, though. It's not science and wonders, though. It's people's hands, people maintaining law and order. Okay, I think that's all for now, for this one. Then let's see, is there any other one? So let's see smart city, yeah. Put on the uh, voice this time. Just how smart is your city? Chances are it's getting smarter by the year. Many governments around the globe are racing to infuse technology into just about every aspect of its city's operations. And I mean every part. Including public transportation, IT connectivity, water and power supply, sanitation and solid waste management, efficient urban mobility, e-governance, and citizen participation. And it does this using every buzzword imaginable, from big data to the Internet of Things. So how does a smart city work? Let's look at three examples. Here in Singapore, the city-state might be the gold standard of the most extensive effort to collect data on daily living. The government is now deploying systems that can tell when people are smoking in prohibited zones or littering from high-rise housing. Singapore launched its own Smart Nation program in 2014 and will add more cameras like these so the government can effectively monitor crowd density, cleanliness of public spaces, and even the exact movement of every locally registered vehicle. Much of the data it's collecting will be fed into an online platform called Virtual Singapore that gives the government access to how the city is functioning in real time. It could help the government predict how crowds might react to an explosion in a shopping mall or how infectious disease might spread. Over in Dubai, more than 50 smart services from 22 government entities have been rolled out as part of the government's Smart Dubai initiative. Using the government-provided app Dubai Now, you can do things like pay a speeding ticket, which likely captured you on a public camera and then emailed you the ticket directly. You can also use the same app to pay your electric bill, call a taxi, track a package you sent to your friend, find the nearest ATM, renew your vehicle registration, track the visa status of a relative, and report a violation to the Dubai police. Now head over to Barcelona, where one research firm estimates the city will save billions of dollars a year in energy costs just by installing smart systems like these. Number one, smart streetlights. Public lighting that adapts and dims when there's no activity but brightens up when sensors detect motion. The second, parking sensors. Instead of driving in circles looking for a spot to park, drivers can get real-time information on an app which locates free parking spots. Sensors on the street curb use lighting and metal detectors to know if a parking spot or loading area is occupied. And finally, garbage sensors, which are actually compact drop-off containers which have a vacuum network through pipes which sucks up trash below ground. The automated waste collection not only lowers noise pollution from garbage trucks, but also lowers costs and keeps bad odor away. Juniper Research estimates that by 2021, cities will save nearly $19 billion by making their cities smart. But of course, to save money, sometimes you have to spend it first. The global smart city market is estimated to attract $15 billion by 2021, and that's just for software. So now companies from Microsoft to Cisco are aiming for a piece of it. In Singapore, Upton Saidi, CNBC. Still watching? Perfect. Desert might seem like the worst place to bring. Desert might seem like the worst place to breed tropical fish, but Israel is trying to turn unproductive land into areas that make money. Gidon Bloom is now selling half a million dollars of fish to Europe each month. The challenge was doing it in the Negev Desert. The weather in the Arava are very, uh, very hot in the summer, very cold in the winter. The, the water here are uh, very bad water, it's a salty water, salty water not good for the fish. The water comes from the desert's aquifer, up to half a kilometre underground. As for the fish, they're healthy, of high quality and sell at a premium price. Also, 95% of the tank water 
is constantly filtered and recycled through the system. Eventually, it ends up watering date plantations, so there's no waste. It's not only fish grown in the Negev desert, but all sorts of vegetables, including this red pepper. But what's remarkable is that all of this manages... to grow in salty water. The farmers have selected varieties that can withstand the heat and salt. Since this area is not connected to the national water system, we developed a system of drilling wells in the ground and getting all this water from all kinds of different water qualities. We mix them and we divide them to the farmers. There are three and a half thousand hectares of desert being farmed in the Arava Valley. Most of it is for vegetables. Those specially chosen crops are able to tolerate the desert water, which is at least three times saltier than drinking water. What we do in this area is actually live make, and make a living in the desert. And we use the advantages that we have in this area, that it's dry, has very good sun radiation. Israeli farmers are pushing the boundaries of what can grow in the harshest climate. And they're proving that with the right technology, even the desert can be productive. Nicole Johnston, Al Jazeera, the Negev Desert in Israel. Amazing. I know that desert is. might seem like the worst place to breed tropical. Any other example video of order? Let me see. Let me see. Where were we? We've done the smart city. Go back. Go show me another one. Okay, go back. Go and go do something. No, not this one. One order. Have we not seen it? Okay. The power of order. In India is one of the worst this organized place. But even in that place, when one person takes responsibility, and this is a private business, when one person takes responsibility, even in India, India is worse than Nigeria in order, in this in disorder. But when one businesses, individual businesses, individuals, Indians who have lived abroad, who have studied abroad, and who have learned the best practices, see what they are doing in their country now. We have that in Nigeria too, but but some, nothing like this, nothing like this at all. This one is high class, and it's unbelievable. Is happening in India. Clean, and India is the is one of the dirtiest countries in the world. But when you come to this place, they are changing the face of their country. We too should learn the best practices. And after this video, I'm going to ask all of you, what are you going to change in your lives after this HMT? How is your own outlook on life is going to change? And dare to dream. What are your dreams? What would you like to dream if money were not to be an issue for you? What will you dream about? What will you bring about? What would you have liked to do using this principle of law and order. Can we put on the light? <laughs> so that's my question to you all. Can you stand up, everybody, and come and answer that question? When you answer, you'll sit down. What would change in your life from this week's 
session. What do we want to do? What do we want to use this law, this principle to accomplish? What would you like to do with this information that you are getting to know? Give them, give somebody a microphone. Definitely open your eyes because when you came first, one of the one of the first things you were asking is, is it that black men, especially Nigerians, are created differently? Or there is something that is in is in them that doesn't make things to work for them. But I'm sure because of all the your answers I've been listening to, that even you you now know that no. It's not that Nigerians are created differently than you. Eh? Okay. And I believe from now on, what I will, uh, uh, I will take cognizance of that to make sure that actually, even before I embark in anything, I need to have that imagine, imagination before my, the, the lesser uh, light, could, uh, before I could embark on the lesser uh, light, I need to, that greater light, I need to actually Beautiful. have that. Beautiful. And all these countries that we are seeing, that they are orderly and that things work in them is as a result of the greater light. Yes. But someone is writing me here in the comments. I'm reading the comments just for me to feel what people what's going on through the mind of people. So someone is writing here and said that Pastor Sunday, they could not deceive people. There is no safe country in the world because uh, there is nothing like that. Only that the others have better police and response system than others. So only how, it all depends on how quickly they respond to crime. That's why you have only five countries in the list of the video you showed. That's what they are telling me. So no safe country, no, let's just forget about it. So that's why you are all running from Europe, from Africa to Europe, because no safe country. Everything is the same. No safe country. So I should, I, I, I should forget about the topic. Huh? I think that's a, a person, actually. Uh, um, if you say no, uh, no safe country, we, 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 we're living in time of uh, changes now. We have actually really recognized a weakness. So I'm just wasting my time. We, we, and that's why I want to ask you people, what do you plan to do with this thing? 
Because, or maybe you are also thinking I'm just wasting my time here. So, so, so the idea is uh, uh, we, we had all this terrorism going on in some part of the world. I'll take Germany as an example. I was talking to one of my friends that the security system in, U, in the UK, you can't compare it with the security system yeah, in Germany. In Germany. Yeah. Because I've analyzed it, the, the security system in the UK only actually, actually encourage for something to happen before they react. Yeah. But in Germany, they will, uh, the security system that is put in place actually really prevents it from happening. So you can, since all this uh, terrorism has been going on, do you ever actually really hear that there, is, uh, there has been bomb, bomb, bomb in Germany? No. So it is, on, I mean, you can't compare it. So, and, and it is because there is a system in Germany that has been put in place. There is a system. So uh, that's on, not an argument. So in, uh, coming back to myself, the question is, what can, should I observe? What can I put in place now? What have I gained? What has changed in my life? I think I need to actually really make sure before I do anything, before I, I think, uh, uh, before I, uh, I bring, bring out any plan, I need to have a picture. I need to have that knowledge, that wisdom. It is then that I can then embark on the journey of maybe I want to uh, uh, form, I want to make uh, a structure, I want to put structure in place, and also, uh, uh, I mean, make the system running. So that's the most important thing that, that, that uh, I think I've done. You are going back to the foundation. To the foundation. Okay. Um, what I gained from here and what I'm going to do from here, I think I'm going to start with the value system. I'm going to upgrade myself and I'm going to update myself in all the area of my life where I see that there's things that are lacking and there's things that need some improvement and an understanding. After I improve myself and update, and I, I mean, after I, I improve myself and upgrade myself, that is the time now that I'm going to look at what am I going to do for my nation, for my friends, or for anybody who's nearby me? How will I also, I mean, how will I be able to, to, to contribute to their improvement so that they can be at the same stage or at the same level that I'll put myself? Good. <laughs> the wisdom man. Um, what I need to change is um, my, my understanding and how I, how, how I pronounce, um, how I speak about my, how you pronounce words or how you speak about Beautiful. <laughs> so he wants to put order in his speech, in his construction, in his manner of talking, in his mind, in his uh, presentation. So um, one thing that I took from um, this HMT so far is that it's just the importance of questioning yourself. Sorry? The importance of questioning yourself, questioning your thought process, um, because to be able to take an idea, like what you mentioned in um, previous um, sessions, to be able to take an idea 
and convert it to something tangible, we have to question the processing. We can't just think about the initial phase and then the final outcome. We have to think about the huge gap in between. <laughs> so to do that, we have to question ourselves. Everything we have to question. And um, I think that's another thing that's lacking um, just in so many societies that don't have organization or structure is that they, they're not questioning what they see. And it doesn't make sense no to them. No critical thinking. Yeah, there's no critical thinking. There's no analyzing. There's no, there's no sitting down and just making logic from, from what they're seeing. So I think that's one thing personally that I do want to take back to me is to be able to just question myself and to also open the eyes of those around me to also question their thought process so that we can take ideas and make it into something physical. I think that's, that's a great way that we'll be able to change um, our environment, our neighborhood, the society, the nation, Nigeria. Question. Yep. Yeah, I, for, for me, uh, I think I've identified three areas um, that I will need to really improve. Um, and one is actually bringing order in time management. Um, I've realized that um, I've not been maximizing my time. And um, there's so much I can do to actually bring structure into, into my um, daily activities and to, to actually maximize my time. Um, the second one is I've, I've recognized now that um, a couple of um, time in the past I've had um, um, a couple of ideas. Um, I never did take the time to, like you said in one of your teachings, to actually brood over the ideas until I get um, a clear picture of um, what to do. And one other thing is um, I don't take the time to actually gather all the facts and all the data um, that will enable me actually launch out with that um, with that idea. I think that's one other area I would need to like um, bring um, a lot of discipline and order um, into. And um, I think, like she mentioned, for me is um, critical thinking is really really very important. You question everything you do, why you're doing it, try and find out the purpose of why you're doing it and also by questioning yourself you get to a place whereby you're not just thinking of yourself but how what you're about to do will benefit um, 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 people around you so how you can actually make an impact on other people's lives so those are the three areas I, I truly believe that yeah I can but why are you only talking about yourselves and what you are individually going to do about your lives, why not affecting and relating it to the nation of uh, or of your origin or to Africa or other places? Right? Yeah. Okay. I I thought the question was what um, we yeah for our personal life, but for for me, I know one. The one of my passion um, is actually um, enlightening enlightening people because I've discovered something about me. Even if it's just five percent of um, knowledge of about something I, I know, I always want to share that knowledge. I I I feel so. I don't know. I I get kind of like irritated when I see people display um, a level of ignorance for about maybe topics or things that is supposed to be clear. And um, I think for me, b basically, education is one passion I have. So um, I've been thinking over the course of um, this HMT, ways I can actually impact the educational sector in, um, in, in the country. And yeah, a couple of ideas are, are have been coming, but I've been like trying to like think deeper to, to have like a structure of the things that I can do in the educational um, sector. Okay, yeah. thank you. Well, um, uh, uh, what I've learned from uh, this uh, teaching is that I really have a lot of arrangements to do in my personal life and um, learning to put things in order and 
because I, I also learned that you cannot give what you don't have. You can That's only true. give what you have. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I have a lot of work to do on myself, organize myself. And then uh, I've always had this burden of um, building schools in Nigeria. And, um, and it hasn't left me because every now and then that dream keeps coming, it keeps coming, it keeps coming. And now I, un I, I begin to understand because it's always about, about things being scattered and then trying to put things in order again. But I never saw it from the order, from this other part that I, that I just learned that the reason why there is so much chaos everywhere, including in my own life, is as a, is as a result of all the disorder that started from childhood to, to all our religious life and every other thing combined together. So it's like a detox. It's like learning something afresh to bring back peace to that kingdom of God to reduce the violence that is going on in the kingdom of God. So. It, uh, uh, I, I, I have that burden that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, that I'm, I'm gonna build schools and then start from the primary to secondary, to begin to introduce these values, this order, in the in the in, in the in the in the life of uh, of of the younger ones, because it's, it's 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 actually better when when people know this from scratch, yeah, and then when they now when when the time of enforcement when they get to that time of enforcement, they can easily adjust, just like what we're seeing in, the, in Europe. They know these laws from childhood, and by the time they, get, they are getting older, they don't, wanna, they don't want bad record on their name. They don't want anything that will make them not to get the kind of jobs they're looking for. Yeah. So all this whole thing, they, they work together. It's something that, that started from, from, from grassroots, and this is what is lacking in, in Nigeria. The, the, the grassroots, the grass, the, the grassroots, implementation of this whole thing is not there. There is, not, there is no system that is teaching it. The only thing that, that, we, that we know is they teach us how to respect your elders and, and your, your teachers or whoever that is. The respect we know is just, is just normal, normal, normal respect, but there is no order. The importance of order was not emphasized in our lives. Like, like uh, DSA was teaching it here, you will see that almost every slide Order, law, order, <laughs> law, order, law. You're hearing it, you're hearing it. Every slide is hitting you, it's hitting you, it's hitting you. It's like it's like knocking a child on their head. This, 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 this. So uh, by the time you live here, you will realize that it will never leave you. Mm. So it, it will always make you, when it, in fact, it's like, uh, it's like an alarm system that will always remind you, what, what, what did you do today? What have you achieved today? So mm. it, 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 it kicks you to, to, to be at a lot, right. to be able to be in the here and now. So that's, that's what it has done to me right now. Like there are so many ideas that are coming to me that, that, that we are not there because there is no order. Uh, you, uh, when, when, the, when, when order comes in, then it's like a, it's like a new ground is opened for for you, a new, devel a new dev now I understand that without order, there is no development. No development. Yeah. Without order, we can't do nothing. So even we can't even function. Even in our, even in marriage, crisis because there is no order. Yeah. We I, I, there are so many things I didn't I didn't learn as a single man, and then you get into into the into the marriage. It's crisis. And then you now the you you, you, st you now start fighting, and then looking for who will yep. help you because yep. we are used to being all emotional. And then who is to blame? And then who is to blame? You start pointing fingers because nobody wants to take responsibility. You think you are okay. And that is where the, the spirit of humility comes in. In, in, in. in Africa, we are not used to humbling ourselves. That's, that, uh, but, but when the spirit of order comes in, then it, makes, it, makes that, it brings out that humility in you to know that you really have work to do on yourself. So that's, that's what it, ha it has done to me. to mention so another thing that you also spoke about was um that god had the power to create the the earth in one day but i think that in order for us in order for him to allow us to understand um just the power of separation he did it within a week and because of that everything that he did was perfect 
he could have done it in one day. He could, he could have done it through power. But through the through Genesis, I now understood like the processing that went on. Process it every day. Process it every day. He could have just said in a second. He could have created everything in a second. Power. Yeah. But he was doing. I think the reason why he did that within a week was for our understanding. Yeah. For us to know that separation when we when we. Um, all that is needed in everything we do. Yeah, when we disembark our just just everything, our the aspect of our lives, it, we can we can create perfection. Yeah. And that's one th and that's one thing that I, I appreciate again about your project is that ev you you literally separated the infrastructure of Nigeria, and every aspect is so detailed. You you didn't just say I want to change Nigeria. You said I want to change the school system. I want to change. The, the roads, I want to change uh, the, the medical field, the hospital. You, you literally separated every, just the, the, the Nigerian society for everything to be perfected. And I think that that's one thing that I want to take back um, from this whole HMT is just to separate every aspect of my life and to perfect each and everything. Because if I go into and say, I just want to change this, it, it, it's not going to be perfect. I, there, there has to be a processing. I have to just sit down and analyze every single thing. So that's another thing that I wanted to add to that. Beautiful. Uh, like one of the things I've learned in this uh, HMT is that I have to, you know, broaden my horizon in terms of um, knowledge because knowledge will help you to see the big picture, to help you to see further. Yeah, that's life. That's a big life. Yeah, than, uh, than just working. And the second area is that I really have to like reinforce this self-government, right? Because self-government will is very, very paramount for, y for one to be able to transform people's life. Because your image speaks more louder than your voice. So self-government, I have to reinforce that area. And one of the things that normally discourages me most in, in the area of this order is that at times when you try to make things in the proper way, people tend to look as if they are so rigid, order, 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 and it's as if they are, are not flexible. It's as if they are commanding people. It's as if they are like controlling people. And th that thing discourages me so much, like because I, I live in Austin and I and I try to do things like this, yeah, you know, so I, ju I just have to encourage myself, you know, despite the way they probably people might be saying it, but I have to encourage myself to make sure I go on with it and I, and with, you know, like probably communicating and um, teaching the, the, the benefits, I, I, I know it will go a long way. I don't, I don't have to like go to everywhere, but I let me start for my environment, yeah. you know. That's what I have to say. Okay, thank you. So what I uh, will start to change or what I take from uh, all this teaching is that it really starts with the little things first. Uh, I, s I saw that Singapore gives fines out for people spitting on the ground. And who thinks about that? So all those, the, the little thing is so important. So I, I, I actually already started with uh, making changes that even my roommate asked me what I was doing in the middle of the night because I was uh, organizing my suitcase and ironing mid in the middle of the night just to <laughs> make everything right, you know. And I have a really strong burden for the youth in my country and I really want to be an example and a role model and, I, and that's why I think that it starts with the little things first. So uh, that's, that's for me the most important one. And also I uh, take out of it that um, well, I see that you have a strong vision, and I don't hear s many people, or not, no, uh, uh, actually nobody, I don't hear nobody talk about transforming a nation um, besides for people who are already dead or that man for Singapore maybe. So I, I get out of it that uh, it, it, it takes just one person yeah. to start yeah. with the vision, and it, it doesn't take a, a large crowd, just one person who believes that it that it is possible to change it. So uh, I think that I'm the one for, for Holland. Uh, maybe the, the infrastructure in, uh, is 
is good in Holland, as we've seen in, in, uh, in one of the videos, but the culture is in disorder in Holland. So, yeah. and the youth, th that is the new, you, when I came the first day, youth called me the next generation. Yeah. And uh, not only I'm, I am the next generation, all the young people, the listeners, uh, the viewers of the DSA show, we are the next generation. So let's get our lives in order and be the e example for the people around us and for the next generation to come. So yeah, and for that to happen, you have, everybody has to be less selfish. Because the reason why few people think about changing a nation is because everybody is just thinking about their lives, yeah. about themselves. Anybody wants to contribute? Any other person wants to talk? If you don't talk, you will not see though. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, sir. Um, as you were speaking, I <coughs> saw a picture from uh, one of the slums in, in Nigeria. And I was just looking at the picture. I mean, everywhere was dirty, just so dirty. The question would be, is this a problem of government in the real sense that the environment is dirty? So it brings to bear the fundamentals of what you are saying, that if everyone should imbibe uh, order in their lives, then uh, things will fall in place. So how do I want to apply that? Uh, personally, I have an ambition. I think that's an open secret. Uh, but I'm yet to start drawing concrete plans of what I want to do. I just have the ambition, and I know it there. So one of the reasons, one of the things I've also been questioning is where do I start from in drawing? Because you cannot just start from economic policies. Mm -hmm. So That's what they are doing now. Yeah. And there is no change. Yeah. Everybody is talking economic policy, economic policy. And I just, ah, these people are so, they're so ignorant of these things. They don't even address what matters, economic policy. That's so cheap. Anybody can do economic policies. Go to school. But the fundamentals are not being addressed. So from listening to, I mean, from listening to person, they've been around him and obviously having the privilege to ask so many questions. I've been able to, within the, with this December, I've been able to come up with a, a project, which I think will be the underlying factor. But after that, I am going to now sit back again to uh, digest law and order. I think that's the first thing I'm going to start from. So not only would I produce document from it, but I'm going to produce a grand plan on how, for example, my own administration uh, can, um, you know, it's still a long time, right? But before then, what can I do to bring law and order yeah, to, to Nigeria and looking at what's on ground? And then uh, how can I maintain it and sustain it even if I'm there? So on that ground, that means the first thing I would like to form now in regards to that would be one that would be dedicated to uh, law and order and how we can spread the understanding in Nigeria. I th so I think that's the first thing I would do, sir. Yep. Thank you. Um, the teaching today actually um, made me realize how that the Ten Commandments are really commandments of love. I was standing there and uh, just moving from right, left, right, left, and uh, I had a picture um, of me under a light, uh, surrounded by light, like in a house. And um, in this house, there were different um, rooms, but not each room was uh, enlightened. And I, I, I had uh, like people coming and knocking at my door. I, just, I would just open the door and just give the information and just close the door. And I was wondering, what is that? What is that? And um, the more um, Pastor Sunday was t uh, speaking, the more I realized that actually there was a time in my life where uh, when I, uh, I, had, I was just spending t a lot of time uh, meditating the Bible. And uh, I, I was a student in France. And the, this was also a time where um, my life changed because of this meditation of the Bible. I, I really had radically changed. I became like... People, um, the students would call me the nun, <laughs> mm. uh, just because um, I, w I became uh, I became excellent in in in, in, in translation, and, um, and but also extremely quiet. But not quiet because I was quiet, but but because something light had come into mm. me. Um, 
because maybe I, want, I wanted to be everybody's darling, <laughs> something came up, I opened the door, my door, and chaos came inside. And in me, I had two different systems, chaos and light and wisdom at the same time, and both cannot work, work together. And what I realized actually, and what I will take from this teaching is that I need really to um, extremely be disciplined and cast this chaos out of me and become, come back to this place where I, I can really download directly things from God. Because at this time, believe me, I wouldn't even pray to have anything. I would just think, Lord, I, actually, I need that. And something would happen, and I, the thing would mani manifest in my yep. life. Even the, the, um, the examination, I, I remember the bachelor examination. I was, I was, this is the first time I saw God in my life. Because um, three weeks before exams, I was praying, and then I heard really a, um, a, um, a voice telling me ti um, um, the time, a page, a title. And uh, I heard from from beginning to end. I didn't understand why. I said, okay, maybe it's me. I'm <laughs> a little cr crazy. And um, the voice told that to me three times. And um, because I had um, time, the, the, um, the magazine Times in my room, I went there and I opened the, uh, the, um, the, um, the magazine to the page it, and it was the, uh, the title of the article. And um, but three weeks later, we had the examination. And I don't know why. I just read this, this text and um, looked for the difficult passages. And as I went for examination, it was this text. And I went back home, and I realized, actually, that God was talking to me. And uh, this is just to say that um, when, as long as I dwell or, or we dwell in the presence of God, things we don't need to pray for signs and wonders, miracles, and so on and so forth. They come into being in our lives. And uh, that's how uh, also the, um, the Ten Commandments, why the Ten Commandments, commandments, which are actually commandments of love, come into place. And we need them. I need them. And uh, the, the second part of this um, picture is that these uh, students or people coming to me, I would just open the do <laughs> door and just give them the information and just close the door. Uh, um, and I see, see myself also, uh, actually what I have in my heart is to help people, people who are willing, or peace-loving or uh, truth-seeking people, or people who really want to, to do something in their, li in their lives, that they come to me and, and for information. And most of the time I give this information and I just close my door and then um, and, and, and life goes on. Um, and what I want to, to do, actually, I would like to um, have a house, a big house, not for me, but uh, for people who have been damaged by religion and who want to stand up again, but who have also have a clear picture or want to have a develop a clear picture of their lives and want to... to, to to do something in their lives, and I would, um, I would like to have them. Maybe that my, the home would be a place where people come just for restoration, develop themselves, stand on their feet again, feet again, and then carry on. Thank you. Actually, it's not very really understanding here because I told Mario I don't like to be sorry I like to be quiet, <laughs> but it's a challenge. You are in class. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure when you went to school, <laughs> you forgot yeah. about that privacy. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been here. It's or you don't want your pastors to know you are here. Oh no, I don't have. They will see you on the internet. <laughs> no, 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 I don't have a pastor. <laughs> okay, because some of them are afraid. Some people are afraid. Yeah of their, what their pastors will tell them, their Facebook pages. No, and, uh, no okay. I'm actually Catholic, so I'm not okay, afraid good, of any good, good. pastors. You are free. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is actually a validation for me that I am not crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from originally? Uh, my parents are from Benin. Benin Republic. Benin Benin. Republic? Yeah. 
I thought you were from Eritrea. <laughs> That's what most people think. Ah, <laughs> or Ethiopia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I have a mix of culture. I was Fulani. Okay. Right. In, in Nigeria, my mother is actually from Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay. So you are Fulani. No, I'm from Benin, but there's a mix. So <laughs> I don't want to go, go to that online. <laughs> I, this is a validation for, to me that I'm uh, actually doing the right thing and, um, and I'm less confused that it's okay if I don't get a lot of uh, friends because of the things that I stand for. So I've always felt like an outcast. I have came across DSA like just a week ago and I'm like, I need to speak to you. That's why I'm here today. Can you believe it? <laughs> She just got to know me about me one week ago, yeah. and she's already in Ukraine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then she was stranded in the airport for like two or three days, just on her wake of it. So, yeah, so we've all learned. We, I think these things that we've been hearing, we know that. It has been activated again in us, but we have the responsibility to take the, each one of us to take it to our ecosystem. But if we want to introduce law and order in our ecosystem, we need to understand that ecosystem. What do they worship? What, who, who, uh, what do they worship? Again, we're taking religion out of it. So what do they worship? What are the values? So we need to research about our ecosystem before we can take that knowledge to them to understand them so that we'll find out a way to put, to create the awareness for them to get it and follow the process. And then on the, on, uh, do, uh, while doing that, then they can, they can find Christ. So that's all I wanted to say. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. But I want to tell you, because you are coming from the U.S., you have jet lag. Yeah. So don't be afraid to take your time and rest and recover when okay. you need to. Yep. Yeah. Well, one thing that stood out really, really for me today, especially today, is uh, one thing that stood out especially for me today is that uh, one should be forceful with peace, just like those who are forceful in for war. <laughs> so I want to start with myself. I want to spend more time in day one to get more illumination, to get more, to get more light on the situation. The situation by CP I mean the situation in myself, the situation that I want to influence, study it more and also focus more. And then from there I want to start acting. But I want also want to take time to take an inventory of what I have and what I can add and also put those things that I already have in order. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for me, um, the way I'm going to apply this is uh, in certain regards, especially as it concerns um, the cost of my life and those things that I want to achieve. Um, I'm quite passionate about young people and I want to, in my lifetime, see order restored to the minds of young people, especially in Africa. So um, I've also chosen to um, first of all, bring order into my own life, bring order into my own thoughts, bring order into the things that I do, be systematic about things, and not just do things um, randomly. So uh, through these uh, systems that I've learned, through the ways of building systems that I've learned, I'm learning to bring order to a lot of my projects, um, especially in Africa. Uh, one of the things that I was able to achieve last year was... Um, concerning the real policy for education of young people. And I didn't even know so much about um, the teachings of order when I was building that for our state government, which is that we declassify the school system and we enforce education. Education is not necessarily classrooms. It is you know, access to information, basically, and all that. So we were lucky to uh, discuss all of the ideas with our deputy governor and it was built into 
um, a letter back project, which of course they will have to submit to the House of Assembly, and if approved by the House of Assembly, then becomes um, a state policy. So uh, right now I'm working on um, the health sector, uh, policies for the health sector, basically because there is a lot of, I don't know if you've read over the news, every year Nigerian doctors are leaving the country going to better, con um, going to, of course, better countries for pay and all that. So if we choose to bring order into the health sector, uh, we, there is a way we can reduce the demand for medical doctors because health has nothing to do with hospitals. And that is what people do not know. It, I used to say again and again, this is one of the things I'm working on, that the hospital is to a person worth the mortuary is to a dead body. <laughs> so you only need the hospital. It's an emergency resource. It's an right? emergency. So um, there are far cheaper, far easier ways by which we can build healthcare and we will not need doctors. Hmm. So this is bringing order into the healthcare. Into that system. can revolutionize the whole health system in Africa, in Nigeria. Yes. Hmm. So um, I'm, I currently, I built a, a thesis around it, which I submitted for my PhD, and it's been accepted by um, a top university in the UK. Hmm. So um, if this is implemented, then we will have serious order in the healthcare of, of Africa generally. Wow. Yeah, I think I will advise you to keep on developing it. So the level of implementation, put order into it. Structures, instructions, law, regulations, and with Nigerian situation, with Nigerian uh, peculiarities. And uh, maybe we'll be able to do something that the world will learn from eventually. You want to talk? Um, yeah, okay. all these things you have been learning, what do you plan to do with them? Okay, I've learned of um, law preceding order. <coughs> so then after you get order, order leads to peace and yes. rest. Yes, sir. And then greatness, which is what we want. Yep. But before I proceed, before I get the law, I need to aspire for an insight. Right. The insight is the greater light. Beautiful. And then with that, I could, I could cherish the law. So, you know, when I cherish the law, I, I could act orderly. And when I act orderly, I get to achieve peace, rest, and greatness. Yep. Is there any way that will help you personally in your life, in your development, in your growth? Yes, I mean, for the fact that I am aspiring for the insight, yeah. I believe when I get the greater light, I'll be able to cherish the law, which I'm previously not used to. So when I cherish yeah. the law, I will definitely be able to act orderly. And Beautiful. when I act orderly, it, it, it goes on with the rest of Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Now, I have a question to all of you people. I'm concerned about Nigeria, my, Nigeria in my heart. Do you people believe that, not just Nigeria, but Africa too, but do you people believe that with this knowledge that you are, we are getting this way, if we are able, if we succeed in bringing it to Africa and saturate Africa with it and really penetrate radio, television, do broadcasts, show these things, in fact, I, be, I, I, I personally want to appeal to people who are watching me now, or some of you are here. There are some of you eh, that God is quickening right now. Some of you, it is your lifetime calling to bring order. Because we need order, for example, in the food. We need to work out a system of order in what we eat, how we cook. For example, in Nigeria, for example, they are still cooking with fire. We need order there and say, no. no. At the least we should have, everybody should cook with gas or electricity only. Gas at, le at least. So no more cooking with, you know, quickening your eyes and making you blind and making you... I mean, somebody was telling the story the other day, who was the person, that they were cooking with fire, that they, when the, the person got here to Europe, huh? Top Seagate, yes. That she was, there was 
smoke in her lung. And they were asking her, ah, have you been smoking? Because of fire, cooking with. So that is order. So we need order, part of order is standards. So we need standards for homes, for building houses. You know, that's part of order. So when you are building, it must be the same parameter everywhere. Parameters is part of order too. Uh, instructions in water we drink, that they don't just sell water, bottle water, bottle water, or plastic water everywhere. There must be instructions there. That is part of order. They must be processing and certification that where are you getting that water from? What is the guarantee that that water is clean? Who gave you the certification? What's your number? So this is part of order. So that's what I'm saying, that there must be campaigns about order. And there are some people right now that God is giving and is going to give that burden to. That we should begin to campaign about order everywhere. Standardization. I remember I went to Nigeria one time and one guy from the, met me in the church and said that, oh, I have boarding school, no, not boarding school, nursery schools. I have four nursery schools in Ibadan. So I want you to come and see my schools. When I got there, we know what is nursery school. One room like this. And everybody on the floor. All the children in the, on the floor. Playing with some few, uh, what they call it, uh, toy. And one person trying to make all the hello, no street school. No order, no standard. Everybody just writes something on the something around, and they are, then people, parents are paying for this no street school. So order is not just police. Order is not just legislation. Order is in everything. And that's why I showed you the, the film about America, Igalia, Yatibes Kazala, Yatibes Gavarish, with the Pastavila film, Abete Americanski, Tisame, Kaj, the Sivonia Yanivi, the Reto. If I tell Monte Gavarish, the devil's coming, Kaj, the Medos Nivi, the Teta Kaj. That's why the American film that I was showing you about how they develop value system through film industry. Those are the kind of, we need a huge awareness campaign. We need to educate our people about standards. And we need structures, agencies, government departments that are just working on bringing forth new demands and order for everything. Road must have standards or it's not accepted. Walkways, standards of marking. Drivers must drive in a certain way. That's a standard for drivers, not just to have certificate. Cars must have standards. Cars that must not be allowed to the road. And what state they must be in. And of course, people will be telling us that, okay, it's a police state now you want to build. Everything is under standard. Everything is under law. Any country that works, that's the, that's the only reason why they work. Everybody must be regulated, regimented. Otherwise, we will not attain civilization and development. So, and but then, there must be a lot of people who are civil societies, we call them. Or ordinary citizens who are just dedicated to promoting this. That would be the calling of some people. To bring about order and standardization. Yes, my sister. Um, okay. I they want to see your face. Oh, sorry. They prefer I your face to your <laughs> spine. Okay. <laughs> For some reasons, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I think uh, there's something that I was just thinking about something when I was seated now here. Yeah. Why are you putting off the light? Okay, bring your shoulders to the other side. <laughs> I just found out.
about the important, I was just thinking about something. <laughs> How strong is the value system? I remember when I was growing up, we used to, uh, there used to be a program on, in my, actually it, it used to be in my country. Yep. On the radio, it used to be in, the, in my native language. Okay. This program used to play like every afternoon on Saturday. And this woman, she always talk about how a person can dress, how to dress. I think Beautiful. I, was, I think I was just a teenager. I think I was Beautiful. Like 14, 15. But things that I've learned from that woman, I've learned a lot of things from that woman that I could still remember even up to now. And even some things that she mentioned, and up to here, up to my age, I never did them. I remembered her saying, as a person, never wear something shiny during the day. And then you know when you are young, you are a teenager, you don't know, you can put on anything and you just go. And this, this, there were this shiny, like shiny top, and people used to put on those. And then it's like, after I just learned that from her, I knew what to dress since. And I never, even if I see somebody like putting on shiny, something shining like it's a Christmas tree during the day, I used to feel pity, especially here in Ukraine. It's, they like to, to shine. I used to see it here. And then I just feel like even them, I thought they are more developed and more aware than us. They can put on a shiny thing like a Christmas tree during the day, shining. Especially in Africa, if you put on a shiny thing and imagine it's already sunny in the reflection, how you are damaging people's eyes. Because it's like you are ref they're reflecting, it's going on, I mean, it's going to them. It's like a mirror. I think we have to start with this. It really helps a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> I want to talk about some books that will help people to bring order. If you want to bring order to your finances, not even presently, but for the future finances, get this book, How to Build a Secured Financial Future. This is order in finances. If you want to bring order to your mind, creativity, and innovation, this is what you need. The creative and innovative power of a genius. If you want to bring order in your relationship with people, you want to know uh, and bring order and standard in relating with people, this is the book you need, The Law of Difference. If you are a Nigerian and you want to contribute and you want to help the governors and the everybody or yourself in bringing about economic development, this is it. You want to contribute order in economic development of any country, and Nigeria in particular. This is Nigerian economy the way forward. Then if you want to help with bringing or understand how to bring order to political life of Nigeria, to politics in Nigeria, this is the one you need. Nigeria, or in any country, order in political life, Nigeria and the leadership question. So uh, these are just a few of the books that will be able to help us in the question of order. Then there are some other books that we have just been released, but they are only, unfortunately, on Amazon. Uh, they are here, too. You could order them from DSS Books at gmail.com, DSS Books at gmail.com, so you could get them here as well. But uh, you can also read them all for free. All these books, you can read them all for free on Amazon. If you are on Amazon, Unlimited, Kindle Unlimited, all the books will be free there. Now, there are some other books that will bring you order in your own private life, in your own life. There is a book that is called Who Am I? Why Am I Here? It will bring you awareness about your personality. Then there is another book. Some of you who watched my HMT, the last HMT we did, is about personality, right? So there is a book on that, Let the Heroes Arise. But there is another book that just came out that last week. It's called I Am a Person. Am I a Personality? That is lack of order. And that tied to I Am a Person. Am I a Personality? That is bringing you order. That is different from mouse. We are going to do mouse. That is a different book. So I am a person. Am I a personality? I am a person. But am I a personality? 
many people don't know. Confusion. So this book will bring order into your identity. So it's also on Amazon. You can get it also for free, I guess. Or read it for free. Then How to Win in Life is another new book that is also on Amazon. You can get it at dsbooks at gmail.com or you can get it on Amazon. Go either buy them or read for free. So How to Win in Life is another book that will make you to know why some people win in life, why some people don't, why some people fail. But this topic in particular, there is a particular book that explains most of the thing I'm talking about now. It's called Excellence. Excellence. That's the name of the book. Excellence. Your key to elevation. Excellence, your key to elevation. Excellence. Because there is order brings excellence. Order brings out quality. Order brings out perfection. So there's another book that is going to help you people in this. And the book is called Why Am I Unlucky? Why am I unlucky? Because people who, especially people who are in crisis. Why am I unlucky? That's a new book also on Amazon. You can buy them on uh, DSS Books, DSS Books at gmail.com or on Amazon. I doubt you read them for free or you buy them. Another one that will help you here is called how to, how to Get What You Need in Life. Because what you need. So many people don't know what they need in life because there is no order in their desires. But this one will help you with order in your desire to, know, to get what you need in life. Then another one that will help you with order in your time is a new book also. It's called Why Losing Your Job is the Best Thing That Could Ever Happen to You. That is, if you're unemployed or if you are free, if you don't know what to do with your time, that book, Why Losing Your Job is the Best Thing That Could Ever Happen to You, is on Amazon as well. So that one is another book that will help you to bring order to your life. Another one is The Essence and Value of Life. The Essence and Value of Life. It's also there. You know, it will just help you to understand life in general. What is important in life, what is less important in life, and so you don't just become like a biomass, but you actually understand life. Another one that will help you in, the, in place of order is how to bring order into problems and challenges you have in life. It's called, hello, I am looking for problems. Yeah, so that you, you, you can be dumped in the midst of problems and you'll be able to bring order and sanity into them, out of them. That's the name of the book. Hello, I'm looking for problems. Yes, that's where it's called. Hello, I'm looking for problems. Why? You are so confident. You have so much understanding and so much insight that problem no more scare you. You are the one looking for them even. Bring it on. <laughs> so that's another book there that will be able to help you people. Now, somebody is saying, you are not in Nigeria. You are not doing anything. I'm doing something. I personally believe that what I'm doing by writing these books is more important than even if I'm been there physically. Because I have to prepare the ground. Everything stands with understanding, with light. This is the greater light. This is much more important than just going about, running about, doing something. This, yes. And then, for people who are here who want to build their finances for today, there is a new book that is called Don't Eat Tomorrow's Food Today. That's the name of the book. So, so, so just to, where to start, if you want to know where to start financially, it's called Don't Eat Tomorrow's Food Today. That's the name of the book. Don't Eat Tomorrow's Food Today. For those of you who want to help your country find the purpose and calling of your country, you want to help your country or your state or your town or your village get vision and find out so that you bring purpose and direction and order to your nation, to your village, to your town. The book is called Discovering the Purpose and Calling of Nations. Yes, Discovering the Purpose and Calling of Nations, or town, or state, or village, or town. Huh? It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon eh? Discovering the Purpose and Calling of Nations. How do you help them discover, the whole nation discover who they are? 
Then finally, the book that I would like to finish with is, is called, this is bringing order into your work habit, to your work ethic, work at, uh, habit. It's called work is better than vacation. So this is balancing between your work and vacation. And even making your vacation productive for you. And why you will even be productive every day, every time. During time of rest or during time of work, work is better than vacation is the name of the book. And then it's our second name. Work is better than vacation, labor better than favor. Work better than vacation, labor better than favor. So that's the final one I'm encouraging you to get to know today. So if you want to get the books, you can get them and read them for free on Amazon, Kindle Unlimited. Or you can order them on Amazon uh, to buy them. But it's cheaper if you buy them from dsasbooks at gmail.com. So the last book I mentioned is Work is Better Than Vacation. Work is Better Than Vacation, Labor Better Than Favor. Well, that's it for today. For, I mean, not for today. For now, I'll be back in the evening. Two classes I have between the evening then tomorrow. Who do you have this afternoon? Pastor Victoria, okay. I have, uh, I want to do a presentation about Nigeria. You will help me. I have Vitaly, one of my assistants, one of my team members for Nigeria. I want to do presentation, another presentation, different from the one we had before, about how we are planning to solve Nigeria's problems. So we have to find a time to do that. Okay, yeah. All right, take care, guys. Blessings. Thank you.